Greetings, everyone. Hi, this is Pastor Song Bay from Lighthouse School. Um, I'm coming to you today with the prophetic word for the month of May. And I didn't announce that I'm going to do this, but I just really feel like I, I'm ready to release this word. So today is April 29th, but today I'm releasing a word for monthly prophetic word for May of 2022. So the title of this word is um, Month of Divine Connections. I believe that month of May will be a month of divine connections. So I'm going to go through this word. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for all the things that you have done in April. I thank you for the acceleration that did come. And I pray that as I release this monthly prophetic word, you would just give me, give us an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, even in this broadcast in Jesus name. I pray for strengthening. We invite the spirit of revelation and wisdom in Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right, everybody. Hi. Um, it's great to see you. Um, I see some of you watching. I'm, I'm learning how to do these cross postings, all these features. And so you'll probably see this on Songbei page, this page, and the uh, Ministry Training School page. Um, I'm glad you're joining us. I see some people from Asia watching, so that's great. But the month, this month I was praying, and I believe that the word God's given us for this month is divine connections. Number one, God said destiny helpers are coming. And the Bible verse that I'm going to go through, two verses that I see here, are one, Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpen another. And then another verse is Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity, any, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them, help them up. So that's the word I have for you. And um, number one, I want to go through what kind of divine connections is God bringing in the month of, month of May. I believe destiny helpers are coming. I believe God is going to bring people who will help you uh, get to your destiny. And you might not recognize them immediately, but as the month goes by, I believe that you're going to uh, meet some new people. And even God's going to bring some old people that you knew to reemerge in your life to help you with your destiny. So I thought about this. And I thought, you know, Paul, when Paul, Paul, the apostle became the apostle to him, one of the biggest destiny helpers was Barnabas. It wasn't Peter, but it was, it was Barnabas because Barnabas, the apostle Barnabas really introduced Paul to the apostolic community. Um, great to see you all. It's great to see you. Um, I, I say hello, you know, make comments, share this video on your wall so other people can watch and have hope for the month, of, month of May as we prophesy together and just release this word. So, you know, Barnabas, um, introduced Use Paul to the to the apostolic community. Other apostles were very skeptical of him, but in in a way, Barnabas was the destiny helper for Paul. And I saw something like that, and I was reminded of how Mordecai was was Esther's destiny helper. You know how how amazing is it to have an uncle who is always in front of the palace, going about being an intercessor. You know, for Esther, Esther's in the palace. He's worried about her. He he's just there. You know, and um, I'm just reminded of you, my uncle, who is a pastor, who is a retired Methodist pastor in New Jersey. And I always thought of my uncle as my destiny helper. He always spoke the truth. He always knew who I was, even before other people recognized it. Even uh, since I was a little girl, you know, I I do have a Mordecai in my life like my uncle but you know Mordecai uh, was it was was there to help es Esther fulfill her destiny without Mordecai Esther would not have realized that her call was actually to save the whole Israelites right and Ruth was actually a destiny helper for Naomi when you think about it because Ruth didn't really have to stick with Naomi right Ruth didn't have to be loyal to Naomi Naomi's family line had a call and a destiny upon her family line but Naomi, you know, lost a husband. And in those days when women become widows and all the men die, you know, their family line gets cut. And, uh, but, but Naomi had a, Naomi's family had a destiny and God sent a destiny helper, Ruth, to be loyal to Naomi. So these things, I believe in the month of May, God's going to bring and highlight destiny helpers. He's even going to highlight it. There's some destiny helpers that are right around the corner for you. You're, you're with them. You know them. They're your friends, but you might not have seen it that way, but I see light switch coming on. I see God highlighting something for you so that you recognize, oh, this person was actually a destiny helper for me. Oh, this person uh, really did help me. And this is this person is very significant for me. You're going to have that revelation in the month of May. So I'm super excited about it. Your destiny helpers are coming in the month of May. In Jesus' name. Number two, in the month of May, God is going to build teams and army divisions uh, in the month of May. So 
I see teams. I see army divisions. Army division, I mean like the army of the Lord, where you're called to the same prophetic, um, prophetic. Uh, you're called to the same region to pr pray for revival for that region. And you've been doing it all by yourself. And you haven't really been placed in your division. And it's been a really difficult warfare. Well, God's going to bring groups of people to you. He's going to build teams for you. So I see teamwork. I see more people, more people coming. Um, like Paul and Barnabas also, they, they traveled together. They were ministering together. They needed to do ministry together. And David and Jonathan, of course, Jonathan's soul was knit to David. You know, they were really good friends um, and that kind of thing. I really, um, and then this proverb verse really stood out as iron sharpens iron. So one person sharpens another. God is, and as I was writing this word, and really these words really have to do with accountability. And how many of you know that the greatest uh, Methodist movement, I love John Wesley and the Methodist movement, the revival and the holiness movement that, that John Wesley led was actually a movement of accountability. I'm quite fascinated when I studied it. It's like, you know, John Wesley created these groups called bands. So bands were like small groups. Now we say if they're cell groups or home groups or house groups. They had these groups of people that got together and they would break bread and uh, their Bible study or their, their fellowship was basically going around and telling each other what kind of sins they committed the week before and how they need accountability. They were having this fellowship and they were praying together. And so, you know, it was, it was confessing your sin before your brother so that the other person can keep me accountable and make sure that I don't fall into the same sin. That's why it was a holiness movement. It was an accountability movement. And I really believe prophetically, I really feel a strong unction of the Lord, even if it's kind of late in the night and I look a little tired. Um, I really believe that there's a strong unction of the Lord where God is saying, I'm bringing accountability back to the church. I'm bringing accountability back into the church. This is what we really need because we really can't make it on our own, right? We need somebody to help us. We need somebody to keep us accountable. And uh, even uh, in the past couple of days, I was talking with um, some pastors and we were just talking about um, some public figures who fell in sin, some public figures who... Um, uh, you know, people that you know, or I know, you know, that have, we found out that they had all these sin issues and how come they weren't accountable to anybody. And we were talking about how so many people are hurt. They have so much church hurt that when they see all this sin and drama in the church, they just stop going to church. Right. And they don't want to, anything to do with ministry. And we we're talking about those people that were hurt by the church. Um, but that kind of reminds me, okay, why is that? Why do we have these public figures why do we have these celebrity pastors, miracle workers, people who move in the charismatic, prophetic, healing? Why do these people fall into sin and nobody knew it? You know, how could these people have this secret life uh, when nobody knew it? It's because they were not accountable to anybody. They became a celebrity and there was nobody that they, they could, that could speak into their lives. They didn't have that accountability partner. And you know, if you're married, husbands and wives, you guys are the best accountability partners. If you're a wife or a husband and you're a godly wife and husband and you can't really point out the sins of your other spouse and talk to them about it, then that relationship is no longer valid. It's just not a healthy relationship. And you know, I know that there are some women who live under terrible uh, abuse uh, from their husbands and um, the women in, in certain culture, in Korean culture, you know, uh, we can't, women can't really speak up and say, um, that's a sin, you need to repent. Of course, you know, women are always put down. And so, but, but really, why would God create a, a, a marriage union? Why would God create uh, Adam and Eve? Why would God want a marriage? It's because a husband is accountable to the wife, a wife is accountable to the husband. You know, you are to keep each other accountable to stay holy before the Lord. So you become a team, right? So this is very important. And I really feel like, why are we seeing so much divorce rates go up and so many sins in, in marriages? It's because husbands and wives don't have this idea of accountability. If your husband is alcoholic, if your husband is gambling, and the first person that should point out the sin and say, and really pray and, and pray for accountability and say, hey, stop doing that, is the wife. The wife should do it. The wife should do it. And if the wife is wasting money, spending household funds, like, you know, so buying like 10 Louis Vuitton bags and wasting funds, the husband should be accountable. Uh, the wife should be accountable to the husband. And the husband should say, hey, you know, we should tithe. We really shouldn't waste our money like that. You know, that's why God created this, this, um, 
pairing of, of husband and wife. And I really feel like the Lord is restoring accountability. That's going to be uh, very important in the next revival and even in the end time harvest because that's where a lot of uh, great generals and, and uh, apostles and prophets and revivals fall because they have no accountability. You know, you, you're so blessed if you have an iron that can sharpen you. Iron sharpens iron. One person sharpens another. You know, I just sometimes there are times when, gosh, I wish I had friends and sometimes, you know, of course, I have friends, but I don't have a whole lot of friends who I feel like I can genuinely trust to really have them speak into me because that kind of friendship has to be divine. That kind of friendship has to be the Lord building it. That kind of friendship has to have deep trust and no judgment. But a lot of times we are so used to people judging you and so many people are shut. If you bring your sin out and say, hey, I'm really struggling with this issue. Um, I don't think that there's even a church where that says or a Christian friend that says, Hey, let me hold you accountable. I'm going to make sure that you don't do that anymore. I'm going to really help you without judging you. I'm going to check on you, right? I mean, I can tell you numerous stories. I, I'm, I'm very good at opening up, as you can tell, like and when I prophesy and when I speak, I'm a pretty open. I, I thought vulnerability and being open was a good thing. So I did that a lot. I mean, I would be preaching back in Korea, crying and telling people what really hurt me. And I thought that was what church was supposed to do. But then soon, quickly, I realized that the church community and Christians were the worst critics. When I open up my heart and say, this is what I'm struggling with, the number one um you know, attack would come from those people that just heard it right in front of me. They'll use that against me and they'll bash me. And so I soon learned, okay, I'm going to close my door. I'm going to keep my boundary. I'm not going to tell everybody what I'm really going through. And even like in the past couple of years, I would talk to some people about what, what's really going on. And I, I was met with a lot of coldness. I was met with a lot of closed doors. I was met with a lot of judgment. And these are people that might be listening to this too. I mean, it's just how how we don't have that in the body of Christ. And I, I, I really appreciate what John Wesley did with the Methodist movement, where once a week they would check on one another and say, okay, last week you said maybe, you know, you were drinking five times a week. And uh, did you reduce it to three, three times a week? What can we do to pray that you would stop sinning or you would, you know, start tithing or something, you know, that they had this accountability group. And that's really what it was. Their revival was once a week, they had this fellowship of eating together, uh, studying the Bible and, and being accountable and really pulling people up to a standard of holiness. So I bless you, I bless you uh, to really think about it because I believe in the month of May, God is bringing these teams, these divisions, these, uh, he's placing you in a new division. God is placing you. God is strategically positioning you. He's going to reveal to you that you are part of the sniper group. God's going to reveal to you that you are part of the, the I don't know, the, the Navy group or you're part of the, the Air Force. You're part of the intercessory group. You're part of the uh, praying for the nation group. The Lord is bringing teams. He's bringing, he's, he's building the army of the Lord. And I love this verse, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10. I love this verse. Two are better than one because they have a great return for their labor. Labor. So if you have been struggling with not being fruitful, if you have been struggling with not being not having much return for your labor, it might be because you were you were not part of a team. It might be because you were just all by yourself. To do two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. You know, and I'm not I'm not accusing you or anything because I'm prophesying to you hope because I know how it's like, you know, when you're particularly gifted in something or, you know, when you're walking in your calling, really this kind of teamwork, God has to build it. You know, and I've you know, the Lord has to bring these people. And I'm prophesying to you that in the month of May God will bring these people. So it's a really hopeful word. If you have felt like you were all by yourself in, in doing whatever you're doing, and it was very difficult for you, God is bringing the other person. God is bringing the team. God is helping you to uh, have a good return for everything that you sowed into because he's bringing the pairs. He's bringing the friends. He's bringing the arm bearers. He's bringing the helpers. He's bringing uh, the fathers. He's bringing the mothers. He's bringing the generals. He's bringing the partners. He's bringing these people together. So I just bless you to receive this in Jesus mighty, mighty name. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Is That's the whole verse about accountability. If I fall, I need somebody to pick me up. 
but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Now, I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that, that even in, through this broadcast, it will heal the hearts of people who have been isolated, who have been hurt by church, who have been hurt by their previous accountability, accountability partner, who have been hurt by pastors, where they opened up about the problems they had and the pastors slammed them. Pastors hurt them. Pastors accused them. Spiritual mentors have bashed them. Father, I pray that healing will come. I am so sorry if that is what you went through. I apologize on behalf of your spiritual fathers, your spiritual mothers, your spiritual parents, your spiritual pastors, those who you looked up to, your mentors, who bashed you, who cut you out and said it was all your fault. Well, I cancel those words in Jesus' name. God wants to heal the hearts of those people who have been wounded by people who are supposed to be kind and who are supposed to restore you because we all need restoration. That's the thing. You know, I'm in ministry, obviously, you know, I hear so much judgments. I hear so much accusation. I hear so much negativity. I hear there's so much, um, yeah, so much negativity. I don't really hear a lot of love. I don't hear a lot of covering. I don't hear a lot of standing up for your brother or sister. I don't hear a lot of um, finding constructive solutions or creative solutions. Or if you got problems, I mean, I hear a lot of complaints. I cancel it in Jesus' name. You know, the true a true leader is someone who hears the problems and cre brings forth a creative solution brings forth reconciliation, brings forth a solution. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would use us as that kind of person, that we, if, we see somebody, if we see somebody fall because of whatever, that we would go and pick them up. We would, be, we would help them to get up in Jesus' name. That, that um, Father, and those who um, have been hurt by uh, their church people or fellowship people or whatever, and they feel like they, they've been shut, they've been so hurt that they can't even ask for help. Father, I pray that you would even open up mouths of these people and heal their hearts so that they can extend their hands and be restored to receive that help. And I even see, like, as I pray for this, I see some of you have been so wounded, you can't even ask for help. Well, God is saying, my daughter, my son, ask for help, and I will send your destiny helper. Ask for help. So, Father, I pray that the hands will be extended, that you will heal the hearts in Jesus' name, and that we will we would be put in the most effective A team in Jesus name. We will be put in a team. We will be put in an Avengers team. We will be put in the Fantastic Four. We will be placed in the right division of the army of the Lord that we will know exactly what to do and how to fight in Jesus mighty, mighty name. This is for the effectiveness of the gospel. This is for the harvest that is coming. This is for the work of the Lord that's advancing. This is for the kingdom of God that will advance all across the globe. So I bless you. I bless you. I bless you to receive this word in Jesus mighty, mighty name. In the month of May, number three, toxic soul ties will be cut off for good and healthy people will come alongside you. So receive this word. I believe this is a really now word as well. Toxic soul ties will be cut off for good. And the Lord showed me, obviously, the devil is a thief. Devil is a liar. Devil comes. A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, you know, um, how does the devil come through Devil come through relationships? It's through toxic soul ties. How many of you have friends and family members when you spend time minutes with them you get exhausted <laughs> you get exhausted they suck the life out of you and uh when i say that i don't mean it's a very spiritual thing so if you're if you're full of the holy spirit and you know how to receive the infilling of the spirit and you know how to give you know exactly what i'm talking about because um you know and and i'm just being very blunt and honest with you i really don't mind being by myself because when i'm just by myself with the lord i get so filled i love the lord i love the lord um i i know i love the lord and, and when i'm by myself that's how i get restored and so i don't need a lot of people around me i just need some people around me when i need help but sometimes people want to come around me to help me but they're very toxic so they're trying to help me but i get so exhausted <laughs> I'd rather just be by myself. How many of you know exactly what I'm talking about? This is a little different from being an introvert and extrovert. I mean, it's the quietness when I'm just with me and the Lord. That's when I get a lot of things done. It's just me and the Lord. That's when I get a lot of solutions. It's just me and the Lord. That's when I write my songs, you know. If if I got a complainer right beside me, if got, if I got somebody that has a bad attitude right beside me, if I'm, uh, you know, under the same roof, you know, the Bible says, uh, I think in the Bible it talks about how it's better to be living in a, in a poor, poverty 
in a very poor place with a happy wife than to live under riches with a complaining wife or something like that, you know. I, you know, so it's just it's better to be with the Lord. And there are toxic people who who completely exhaust you. You know exactly what I'm talking about. People who take things from you, people who use you as their soundboard, but then they they want you to agree with them when you can't even speak the truth to them. They just use you, use you, and abuse you. Well, these toxic soul ties were sent by the devil. These people were sent by the enemy. Why? To steal, kill, and destroy. And you have been have not been expect it, you have not been effective. It's like when God gives you a blessing and there's a bowl bowl that you are receiving this blessing, these toxic people will make you know put holes in your bowl so these blessings that God gives it gets all drained out. And it's like the more, even if God pours on you, it's all drained after five minutes. It's because of these toxic people that had secretly placed all these big holes in your life to drain you. So Father, in the name is just thank you that these toxic soul ties will be cut off for good in the month of May. Shabba-ba-ba-ba-ba. Thank you, Jesus, that you are cutting off these toxic soul ties in the name of Jesus, that the healthy people will come alongside us this month of May in Jesus' mighty, mighty name for the for the fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Those who, uh, you know, those people who exhaust you, God's going to open your eyes. And I even see like eye-opening experiences this month where suddenly you will realize that that person who you thought were very good for you, you will realize that they were toxic. You will realize that that person was not who, who they said they were. That it, you will discern who was sent by God and who was sent by the devil. So, Father, I just see eye-opening experiences this month. Even for myself, I pray for supernatural, high-level discernment that we would see suddenly, oh, well, I thought this person was my destiny helper, but mm -mm, they were toxic. And, you know, they were doing all these things behind your back, being jealous, you know. And, and this, this idea of jealousy, I mean, you wouldn't believe how many people are jealous of, of the Lord jealous of favor how many you would be so surprised how many are actually against your destiny against your calling and they people do this people are basically used by the devil without them even knowing that that's what they are because it's because of their own pain and hurt and you know that's why we need to so marinate ourselves in the presence of god in healing i need to pursue healing you need to pursue healing because unhealed souls carry all sorts of demonic emotions and it drains other people right and so you know even little like how many of you know like one minute encounter with a true prophet totally refreshes you but 30 seconds of encounter with a demonized person totally exhausts you <laughs> how many of you know exactly what i'm talking about it's like that one email you get from some crazy person who think that they're better than you and they're like, you know, bad mouthing you. That's like exhausts you, right? But like that one, one sentence from Pastor Song blessed you. <laughs> that, that one line of prophetic word on light beam just made, made your day. So I love giving. I love giving the pureness of the Holy Spirit. I love releasing the love of God, you know, and just... So if, if you got a man and a woman of God, if you got like really prophetic Holy Spirit people that seem to kind of distance themselves from you, it may be because you are a bit toxic. You got to kind of think about these things, you know, and I'm not saying that I'm avoiding all these people that, you know, I, I'm willing to give, but I know my limits, you know, I'm only also human, but God is, there are certain people that are living right beside you that are right in your face, even on Facebook that are toxic. That are tied to you so in social media. They're draining you. Father, I pray that these things will be cut off this month. I believe that this is a prophetic word. God's going to give you strength to cut these things off. So that you will be effective. So that you will be fruitful. So that you will walk into your destiny. In the fullness of everything God has for you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for this prophetic word for the month of May. I'm just going to release some now words for the month of May. I really, I saw, as even as I was writing this word, I saw like new beginnings. I saw like healthy relationships. I saw like new birthings. I saw the new launchings. I believe um, this is about divine connections and these connections, divine connections, relationships will come to you in order to birth some new things, in order to blossom some things, in order to initiate some things. It's gonna be a beginning of the beginnings. 
It's going to be a beginning of the beginnings. It's going to be the, the start of something big. It's going to be a beginning of something huge. It's going to be a, a seed of something greater. It's going to be a seed of something greater. It's going to be a planting for an oak tree. It's going to be an idea that will grow to be a big business. That's what's going to happen in the month of May. I prophesy over you in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Father, thank you. Oh, I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. Oh, going off in different countries and cities i believe we're going to hear rumors of wars i believe we're going to hear rumors and initiation or triggering of wars and bombs going off here and there around the globe i hear a warning from the lord even as i was worshiping lifting up the name of jesus i saw bombs going off pray for your cities pray for your cities pray for protection i i, I hear the lord warning and then as I was worshiping, I saw her, God warning me to pray for Seoul, Korea, Seoul, Korea, the city of, capital city of, of South Korea. I saw bombs on top of Seoul. So Father, in the name of Jesus, whatever demonic agenda, whatever thing the enemy tried to do, we bind it and we pray for shaking. There is going to be greater shaking this month as well. Do not be alarmed, says the Lord, because you, what I'm going to deposit in you will be greater. It will be a counteract of what the enemy tries to do. So I see bombs. I see rumors of wars. I hear the Lord saying, protect Asia through prayer. God's going to bring a great awakening of repentance among the Asian churches. Taiwan, pray for Taiwan. I hear the Lord saying, pray for Taiwan, Taiwan. Father, all the Taiwanese Christians, I pray that you will strengthen them. You would put a shield of protection over that nation right now in Jesus' name. I see even like the government leaders of Taiwan being on their knees and praying. There's some people who are praying inside the parliament, inside the Congress, inside Taiwan. And God is going to stir these Christians up. God is going to bring up forth a prayer movement among the political leaders of Taiwan. So I release that prophetic word over you in Jesus' name. I see the Lord shifting things in Sydney. There's a shaking that's happening in Australia. Freedom Fighters movement is rising among uh, Australia. And I see Sydney. I see uh, different coastlines of Australia, different parts of coastlines, people rising up with banners of freedom. I believe God is raising up, even giving greater courage to Australians to really rise up for freedom. God is encouraging you. Some of you have been so frustrated, but God's going to empower you to move forward in this fight for freedom for your nation in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I hear the Lord saying Solomon's wisdom, Solomon's wisdom. This is going to be also a month when many of you receive greater wisdom. Uh, Proverbs, Solomon's wisdom, Song of Solomon. I hear Solomon being highlighted. Seek him and he will answer you. When you ask of him, he will answer you. Ask him for wisdom. He will give you wisdom. Some of you are in life crisis where you need serious wisdom. 
Some of you are facing some decisions that you need to make that are very difficult. Even when I talked about soul ties, and, and some of you have to decide whether or not you need to cut ties with some people. And it's been very difficult for you, but God is saying Solomon's wisdom is coming. I'm reminded of how Solomon made the right judgment, right? When, when two mothers came forward and said, this is my baby, and they were arguing over whose baby it is, Solomon had wisdom to test them. Solomon had the wisdom to test them. And Solomon said, cut the baby up. And, and the real mother said, no, save the baby because she was the real mother. And the mother that was evil, the, the fake mother said, yes, that's fine. You know, get rid of the baby. Well, that's the wisdom of, of Solomon. Some of you are in life crisis when you need that kind of wisdom. Some of you are going to have to test some people. Some of you are going to have th to throw out some things to test. God's going to give you formulas. God's going to give you wisdom to know how to test certain situations. You got to go, you got to test some people, test some situations, test the motives of people's heart towards you. And when you do that, God's going to, it's a, it's going to be a wisdom from God. You, like Solomon, you will make the right decision to reign and rule. You will make the right decisions. Leaders, this is a word for leaders. Now that I'm going to be a little bit extreme here. I'm going to be a little extreme here. Um, I, you know, uh, in the past three, four months, six months, well, anywhere I go, to be honest with you, because I'm a female pastor and a lot of the women don't get good advice from male pastors because men are men and women are women. And so a lot of times when I'm going in the region, I get um, requests from people for counseling. And a lot of women come to me to counsel and they tell me their stories and things like that. There's so many women who live under very abusive marriages, very abusive and hurtful husbands and some some women are going through divorce and they have court cases and the husbands are just narcissistic they come after the the wives and it's just really painful for me to hear these stories but almost a lot of these women have told me that god had give god allowed certain situations to unfold for it was totally god that re allowed certain situations so that the wife um was able to know what was really going on behind the scenes Basically, the thief was caught. The devil was caught. Um, the husband was, um, you know, his intention was all revealed. And it was it was pretty clear what to do. And, and, and you know, it was clear that God was on their side. And so these things, I'm just reminded of some of the stories I heard from these women. I believe in the month of May, that kind of stuff will happen to you where, you know, you're kind of stuck between rock and a hard place. You're not sure what to do. Um, but the Lord's going to reveal some things that you the Lord's going to reveal some things that you didn't even expect. The Lord's going to show you um, the, just, what, the intents of people's hearts. The Lord's going to show you the intention of people's hearts. Sorry, we just kind of paused a couple of times. But um, yeah, that's what that's the word I have for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for also more prophetic now words. I hear the Lord also saying, watch out for Israel. God's going to do some, there's going to be some things that will unfold in Israel. Pray for protection and shalom of Israel. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I hear Jerusalem. Uh, God calling Jerusalem as, as his own child, as if it's own child. Father, I pray for protection over Jerusalem. I pray for strengthening of the Israelites in Israel right now. I pray that God, you will, you will uh, distort the plans of of the enemy against Israel in this hour and the Jewish nation in Jesus mighty mighty name I believe God's going to highlight Israel there's going to be some news about Israel and some of the conflict that will arise out of Israel pray for Israel God is really raising up the remnant out of Russia I hear the Lord saying that he's going to redeem Russia he's awake doing a great awakening among the Russian Christians underground so there's an underground movement that we don't know about that's not on the news but I bless the underground movement of Russia in this hour in Jesus mighty mighty name the intent of the enemy is to bring Soviet Union back, but that is not going to happen, people of God. That will not happen. The Lord is saying, I'm raising up a remnant of the remnant out of Russian Christians and the Orthodox. Even the Orthodox priests will be on their knees because they will gain power to cast out devils in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. I bless the Orthodox churches all across the world. The Russian Orthodox churches will experience fresh revival. If you're a Russian Orthodox tag, send this word to somebody the Eastern Orthodox traditions. These people will seek the Lord those. There's going to be a prayer revival among the Eastern Orthodox churches and Russian Orthodox in Jesus. Mighty, mighty name. Father, strengthen the underground churches in China. Strengthen the underground churches in North Korea. Strengthen the underground churches in the persecuted nations in the sour in Jesus. <coughs> mighty, mighty name. Amen and amen. That's all I have for you for the month of May. Listen, month of May is going to be super busy for me because I'll be preparing for uh, 